Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diddy. This is BSL Hostile League round of 32, Group E. Upper right hand corner, we got Urbmon as the Grey Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we got Urbmon, or sorry, we got Tap Tap. Brain farting there because the colors are very close. Unfortunately, I cannot do anything about that. You see, when I Alt Tab, it just goes yellow, yellow. This is on Retro. Game one went to Urbmon. This is the final match, so Tap Tap's tournament life is at risk right here. Rancor exited the first position. I wouldn't be shocked if Urbmon and Rancor saw each other at later rounds. Uh, could be some really fun matches between those two. This is another four-player map. If Tap Tap wants to try to pull that 12 Nexus, might have a little bit more success on this map. Want to give again reminders that I'm not sure the time of upload. So I, I try to do an upload a day, and I'm trying to think whether today is the BSL Finals or the BSL Finals have either already been played just recently, they're about to be played, or they're on YouTube or on Twitch someplace with 00PL. Check them out. It's Mihu versus Bonneth, going to be cast by Nyokin and Raz. Amazing casting crew. Also check out, usually Jayun. if you check out Jayun's channel, it uh, he's been doing the North American Pro League, which I'm super excited about. I actually really want to see that take off other locations. See like an EU Pro League and a South American Pro League and Asian Region Pro League. I guess they kind of have that with official Chinese stuff already, but I'm excited to see that initiative. And it should have makes it sound like the Avengers sort of thing. Looks like we're going to see an overpool this time from Urbmon, which I think is wise. And again, we're seeing a gate in-base gateway this time from TapTap. Tap. As I said, uh, the last match, which... Ooh, we're going to see 2 gate this time. We have seen a movement more towards one base play, which is basically accelerated things against... It kind of inverts the matchup a little bit. Usually it's Protoss trying to defend an expansion and keep economically relevant versus Zerg. But with this style of play, it forces Zerg to try to oftentimes try to play two bases against Protoss pressure and keep it lively. It looks like a drone scouting bottom right hand corner in the meantime. First Zealot is away. Urban should be able to defend this as long as he produces sufficient Zerglings. We've got one pair of Zerglings. It looks like he's trying to hold it right this second in case he's able to get a sufficient scout. Now building the additional two Zerglings, recognizing he just doesn't know what he's up against. One problem for Tap Tap is this is cross positions, which means it's going to take an ex an extended period of time to get towards that natural expansion. Although that does give some space to maybe slide some Zealots in undetected. The probe f has found the base top right. The Zerglings look like they're going to be able to kill that probe immediately, but he was able to detect that there's a natural expansion in play. And the drone going to be able to cycle around and see at least the initial three Zealots and the two gate. And the Zealot's actually going to dedicate, so maybe tap tap, no, okay, now he's going to cycle back around, producing two additional Zealots. The drone going to hang about for the time being. When that gas is taken can be a big indicator. Yeah, he's, <laughs> that was clever, tap tap holding it for a moment. So, <clears throat> Erdmon knows that he needs to get a few additional Zerglings out or get a sunken colony down here at the natural expansion to provide sufficient defense. And look at this, Urban, I think this was a clever move. Covering the extractor. So calling the bluff a little bit, more zealots are being built, but by covering that extractor that denies additional tech, does finally lose the drone, but denies additional tech for an extended period. That's gonna allow him to not only be concerned about these zealots incoming, so tap tap now moving them, but they're gonna be in side pairs. Tap tap's waiting to set up his natural expansion. Once the Sutton colony is established, Tap Tap needs to be careful with these Zealots and get them back to home base because that's going to free up the Zerglings to do a lot. Right now, Urbmon's economy has taken a bit of a hit, although necessarily so because he's just uh, been defending against potential incursions from those Zealots. So sitting it on a lighter drone count, so right now he's only got six on mineral patches and three cycling gas, is moving his way up to lair. I think his play right here is he wants to try to cycle towards Spire as rapidly as possible, knowing that he's delayed that gas for an extended period of time. Has confirmed the natural expansion. I'm wondering if he's going to cycle that Overlord all the way in. I've said cycle a lot for some reason. And the last two casts, I'll use a different word, like a season or something like that. Anyway, Overlord making its way towards the main is going to see this assimilator just now coming up and a complete lack of cybernetic score, only Zealots, which means that Spire tech is going to be potentially game ending at this stage. Urban has managed to filter in a few more drones, but layers finished waiting to see this. If this drone turns into Spire, once sufficient minerals 
are in hand. And that is before the cybernetic is the cybernetic score. Okay, the cybernetic score is at least building. But this is a great position for Urban to maintain air control. Obliterate these zealots. Wow, that is a huge zealot. They look like they're in a conga line right here. Nine zealots just hanging out, and that's the defense of the natural expansion. Second base is up, but we don't even have a forge here. So zero forge, which means it's potentially only going to be up two dragoons, and in light numbers, to defend against a massive air threat from Urban. And I wouldn't be shocked if Urban opts for an in-base third hatchery. Or even a second gas, recognizing the situation. So we'll keep an eye. Keep an eye there. It looks like he's maybe going to move a drone out to grab a third gas at the 3 o'clock location instead. But this is going to be very, very strong for him. He's got the Overlord watching the Zealots. Second Assimilator is up, but this feels so late. Forge. So the Mutalisks, usually you want a Corsair building as the Mutal... Yeah, he's going to have a huge advantage here. These two Dragoons going to be able to wipe out this Overlord, but... Urban had a pl has plenty of cap space. Forge just now warping in. Plus one weapons is cycling, but none of that is going to be in time for the Mutalisks. So it's going to be... Yeah, the Mutalisks are already constructing, and we don't even have a, a Corsair queued at this stage. And it's going to be one Corsair versus at least six Mutalisks interior to the base. So this is going to be a completely exposed natural expansion. We're going to need a flood of cannons immediately to defend this. Tap Tap is saving a little bit. The Zealots marching out briefly clearing out the overlord to provide at least some semblance of a threat maybe to keep the mutalists a little bit more honest but tap tap is in a dire situation so the corsair halfway finished it might spawn right as the mutalists are entering the base so it's going to be that and two dragoons the zerlings can probably walk back to the sunken colony and defend the rest of this so could be a quick one here overlord is also seeing that army marching across urban rather then engaging the main. Looks like he just wants to go ahead and take these Dragoons out. And this is a lot of... So the Zealots are going to keep Tap Tap alive, maybe, briefly. Because this is going to allow some cannons to get in play. But this is also a lot of units to sacrifice in open field. One advantage, though, is it takes a long time to kill this many Zealots. A very long time to kill this many Zealots. And this is still not... So we got two Corsairs. It's going to need a third to defend a lot of this territory. One cannon out on the front. Urban just going to pull away from it. So third base up. And here's the thing. Even... Ooh! Single Zelt did manage to sneak through somehow. But we got all these Zerglings on standby. So let's see if they're able to get a drone kill or not. In the meantime, the Mutalisk, ignoring the cannon, just going to go ahead and continue to peck away at that natural expansion. The Zealot on hold position right here, which is not benefiting Tap Tap, finally... The Corsair is moving up, so Tap Tap with that sacrifice of his army at least is going to be able to stay in the game. But he's not in a strong position by any means, and it looks like... Enough, so you've got a Zealot at the 12 o'clock, a Zealot at the 3 o'clock, seeing the Hatchery goes up, and this is just not going to be able to stop... It's not going to stem the tide of Urban's economic prowess. And what a great surround on that Zealot, I have to say. Urban looking sharp here. Love to see it and going for the, and just the perfect amount of Zerglings to make sure he was able to wipe that Zealot out and not incur massive losses both directions. Now filling in a lot. Another march out of that Zealot fleet, this time with Corsairs. But plenty of Mutalisks and still a good amount of Zerglings to maybe deal with this otherwise. Three o'clock somewhat exposed. Evolution Chamber there, an okay Sim City, but no Hydralisks behind it. So this could be dangerous. And the Corsairs forward spotting. Keep in mind, plus one weapons is going to be there. So this is going to occupy... Yeah, and we don't have Scourge out in the air either, nor do we have... So this this could be devastating. 12 o'clock location. Let's see if this forces a cancellation to 12. That would have been better for Tap Tap to go to 3. But going to get a lot of Overlords, so Urban fumbling this a little bit by being overzealous and is expanding. And now losing every Overlord to his name. And I don't see... Did he have? He's got a Hydra skin construction. Air control suddenly flipping. Down to 52 out of 21. Tap Tap in a great position now. Able to force a cancellation at the 12 o'clock. However, we got some emergency sunken colonies there at the 3 o'clock and still some Zerglings out on the ground. Otherwise, the Mutalists that are alive trying to avoid the Corsairs. Wow. 
with that plus one weapon's total air control to tap tap. So where I was praising Urban previously, tap tap able to flip it around. Still though, he needs to get a move on and needs to keep killing overlords because this was a really heavy investment. Actually forcing a sunken colony on top of everything else. And he needs to slow down Urban's economy. Urban's got all sorts of resources. He just has no supply to spend it. In the meantime, tap tap doing a reversal of game one. I'm going to go ahead and say, while you're occupied with my air fleet and you can no longer apply pressure, I'm going to go ahead and grab my three o'clock or my nine o'clock base, my third base early at the nine. And he's already got a bunch of gateways up and done a surge in tech to sneak back into this. So now I like tap taps position on this turnaround. Go figure. Making the caster look silly. I'm all for it, though. Three o'clock base defended by Hydralis. One thing, though, is, is that drone count and Probe count are somewhat close, plus one weapons along the way. That is a little bit scary. Urban has discovered that nine o'clock base. So starting to move out with Zerglings that direction. There's still plenty of Zealots, and keep in mind they've got plus one weapons, which is really going to mitigate the ability of those Zerglings to be relevant. And Tap Tap actually might have surged right back into this by dumping a lot simultaneously. So it's now three base versus three base, which technically puts him ahead, but he does need to get that. He needs to keep the probes at, he needs to saturate that base instantly and make sure he gets that probe count up. Otherwise, Urban will be able to flip this eventually. Urban looking to re-grab that 12 o'clock base, has double evolution chamber. So going to try to play it off a follow-up. So moving towards, it looks like six hatcheries. So we got three, four, five, and that's gonna be six. Interior to the base, getting, look at this, transporting for Overlord. So maybe looking to go for a drop at one of these locations, which is actually a little bit crazy. I'm wondering if that was a misclick. We'll see if it was a misclick or not down the line, but I'm a little bit concerned about that. I gotta say on the minimap, I was a little bit concerned about gray versus black, but this is actually looking okay as far as uh, being able to spot things overall. 12 o'clock base was spotted. I think Tap Tap can move his zealots out to go ahead and engage that. He's got the High Templar already in position. Hydralisk's moving there preemptively of that uh, via that concern from Urban. He's already grabbing the gas at this location. He's got a lot of gas humming. And a bunch of hatcheries, although he's not mining gas, it looks like at the 3 o'clock right this second. I'm not sure if that's recognized or not. Could be part of the problem is, is you've got these, uh, the way the larvae spawn and the way these sunken colonies have been placed, it could create a bit of a problem and box the drones out of gas overall. 20 supply deficit for Urban, which puts Tap Tap in a solid position, although Overlord Drop has just finished and Tap Tap's now starting to scramble out on the map. Still has six Corsairs active, a lot of Psy Storm, which could do immense amounts of damage at any location if Urban doesn't play this carefully. He does have plus one weapons, plus one carapace though. Corsair is able to spot the Hydralisk fleet. High Templar moving to a degree in a threatening position. Zealot also checking top left for tap tap to make sure that base is down. So now we're moving into four bases versus three. Drone sitting in the bottom right, so Urban wanting to, to move up a base potentially. He's also, oh, decent sized storm, caught a little bit of Hydralisks right there. He's also dropping a Queen's Nest, which suggests he wants to go ahead and make his way to Hive. I presume he's still going to sit playing Hydralurk through the length of this, mostly because of, uh, he's got that gas, he's not quite yet mining it. So there, there's the gas at the 9 o'clock, not yet mining the gas at the 12 o'clock. But I believe this is just to keep those upgrades rolling more than anything. And let's see if he drops some additional macro hatches on top of it. And Urban's done a fantastic job of just staying heavily droned on top of this. So despite Tap Tap having this third base, he's still in an okay position. Probe and Zealot looking to make their way to the six o'clock location. Urban flooding there, just missing the probe in transition. An Overlord with two lurkers making their way across the six o'clock. High Templar being picked off as well, and also emptying some Psy Storm and drawing that army away from the forward field. The Corsair is also here alongside, so not gonna be there to see the Lurker drop in the main. Actually, they're, gonna, they're trying to make their way to the natural expansion. A Dragoon now doing some damage, but a large, the, armor, the army Marching towards that natural expansion, there's a lot of a lot of hydralists, I should say, to defend that. But it looks like are the lurkers going to get there? Lurkers do land, 
and obliterating that probe line at the natural. Tap, tap, forcing the engagement. Overlord's trying to back out. Looks like a lot of Overlords are going to get picked off, potentially. But the Corsair is getting too far split, and a lot of them getting wiped out. Some good size storm to the north. I think Tap Tap getting distracted in the midst of this. A bit of an empty size storm right there. Does he have any size storm left? No, which is leaving just raw dragoons versus the Hydralisk. This is before plus two weapons, but and it looks like Tap Tap does have the economic lead, but it's just overwhelming. I think recognized Urbmon's economy was too strong. He lost his army, wasn't going to be able to break out or stop Urbmon from staying from keeping an absolutely gigantic economic lead. So Tap Tap drops out. Urban's going to continue to the next round and some wild games. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.